This meeting of the property management committee is being conducted electronically pursuant to Governor Bill Lee's executive order 16. I would ask for a motion that conducting the meeting electronically is necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the coronavirus. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner David Gammon? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Buchanan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Chairman McAdoo? Yes. Uh, in the approval of minutes. It, it may be me, but I, I'm, I can't hear you. I don't know if your mic's on or not. Oh, you need, can you hear me now? Can you hear me? <laughs> Thanks, David. First thing on the agenda, approval of the minutes. Motion, motion to approve the minutes. Motion to be approved by Commissioner Johnson. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Commissioner Cook, any discussion? If not, call the roll. Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner David Gammon? Yes. Commissioner Gooch? Yes. Commissioner Buchanan? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Cook? Yes. Cameron McAdoo? Uh, yes. Next on the agenda, archives building. Good evening. Uh, the archives expansion this is our weekly report. The electrical rough in is still ongoing. Plumbing rough in is ongoing. HVAC ongoing. Fire protection is about 80% complete. Our roofing on the existing building is complete. Exterior wall framing is complete. The sheathing is 85% complete. Our building addition roofing is to begin on the second week of January, exterior brick to begin the first week of January, and the metal wall panels are to begin the second week of January. Okay, uh, we got Commissioner Buchanan with us tonight, and if you got any questions on any of uh, our discussion, uh, you need some more information, just feel free to ask. Okay. It's up on Rice Street, like the back way to the Mac. Okay. The I've been some of the meetings. Okay. 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 Any discussion on the archive building? If not, next is 20 North. This 20 North report, the ceiling grid and the tile is complete um, down to the first floor. They started on five, working their way down. Ceramic flooring is completed in all the public restrooms. The carpet and the VCT complete on all floors. Um, MEP work is complete down to the first floor. 90% on the first is completed. Um, Doors and hardware are supposed to arrive after the first of the year. We, that's been a little bit of a delay. We don't know exactly when they're going to be, but um, but everything's ordered. The casework is to arrive after the first of the year. The third floor demo is 90% complete. Third floor, the third floor new construction plan scheduled to be completed the 18th which we did get the plan on the 18th. The third floor new construction commence, should commence the second week in January, and the fire pump, fire pump replacement is the third week of January. Okay, I got one question. What about the windows we were discussing on that building? Okay, so we've got the 
the, the architect Gresham Smith submitted the plan for the third floor and they're going to do that as a, they're going to he's he sent that out to all of his subs for pricing and part of that pricing will be the windows and so we'll get that he gave he actually gave them to the till the first of January to get the pricing back but I think he has to he actually has to give them 10 days and so after he subtracts the holidays from it it'll be the first week into the first week of January before we get the pricing back. So, Mr. Chairman, the big thing, we were waiting on Gresham Smith and and we were really delayed because of them uh, getting us the architectural design. But uh, in the meantime, the um, uh, demolition crew, he brought in the demolition guys and I think they were done within 10 days and so it's totally down to the bare wall on, on the third floor for the district attorney's office. So it's ready to go. So January 1 when these new guys come back with the pricing we'll have a pretty good idea of where we are including those windows. But the fifth and fourth floor are basically done. They're pretty close. Yes sir. Any other questions on 20 North? Okay. Next on the agenda, one stop architectural services agreement. Could you speak to that? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The when the uh, PBA met last week, I believe, um, we need to get them to change this wording bin uh, that's on this agreement. The, the agreement would be between the PBA and Rutherford County. So both our attorneys, Brick Murphy representing the attorney for the PBA, we just need this uh, agreement between the two. It says, whereas the, you can see on your SharePoint that the county and the city have entered into the memorandum of understanding the MOU, and basically this sets forth the um, one-stop building to ex um, and authorized an expenditure not to exceed five million three hundred thousand um, dollars, <throat> which includes planning, design, architectural services, engineering services, construction, furniture, and fixtures in the project. Now. The, um, uh, if you look on page three of your SharePoint on 3B, it talks about the, it's a one story, construct a one story, 14,000 square foot government building on Blaze Track, um, for which the county clerk will use approximately 4,000 square feet. She came back last week to the PBA and said she would like to, for future expansion to take that to 6,000 square feet. That um, it just seems to be getting, um, uh, ramping up and the more cars are being sold because that's where the hub of all the, the new car dealers are right across the interstate there. Um, it's not increasing the size or the construction of the type of the building. She's just going to be occupying 2,000 more square feet, am I correct, uh, than, than what she had had. The, the county will, I mean the state will still get their uh, 4,000 square feet that they were requesting. Miss Nolan right there. So that's she did address six thousand to you. She said she needed six thousand square feet, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. We've been working on this for two years. Yeah, yeah. She's already grown into two thousand <laughs> square feet. Already right? grown two thousand square feet. And for those looking at uh, if the if the. Uh, she needs 6,000 square feet. The state has come back and retracted. They only need, instead of 5,500, they only need 4,000 square feet. So that's a total. Um, so if the committee wants to redo that uh, and squeeze it back down to the 10,000 square feet and not have any additional expansion room or you could go ahead and lay the pad, you know, those are discussions this committee needs to have. If you wanted to go ahead and, and stub it out for additional square footage or go ahead and build it, not knowing what's going to go in that additional 4,000 square feet on the other side of Department of Safety. Mr. Johnson. 
basically this is just a generic agreement other than this what's, is agreement with the BBA that's correct right what's what's been tweaked for the demands or not the demands but that's the request that. from everyone involved that's correct and I'm, I'm sure the attorneys checked it all out and uh, yes, everybody's in agreement with this uh, yes, I move that we approve this motion to approve the uh, change in, th in 3b and three uh, agreement yeah and, and one other caveat before you vote on that is that um, this is what needed to be the next step is the agreement between the PBA and the county which after you pass it tonight we'll sign that that opens the green light for them to start interviewing their architects and I believe they've got that set up sometime in early January they're gonna bring in four or five architects and start start uh, interviewing I'll second this and I, I thought you did <laughs> <laughs> I want some clarification Yes, ma'am. Are we talking about the 5,500 square feet, or are we talking about raising that to 6,000? Well, uh, and B. She she wanted uh, originally she had requested 4,000 square feet. Uh, Ted Beatty originally had requested a small um, one window and a storage closet. He's retracted from that. He said he doesn't need it anymore. And, but since that time for the last two years, she now says that for future growth, she feels like that it, it would be better if she went ahead and requested the 6,000 square feet, which the PBA agreed to. They don't have the authority, but uh, to give the, um, uh, to send a favorable motion from the PBA that they'll do whatever we tell them to do, of course. Um, Another comment here I'd like to make. Knowing the Smyrna building we need not just one drive through we need two at least because it really backs up well commissioner dot oh it's back there i guess we can look at that on another Mr. I keep saying Lisa Nolan, I will give another finance department. <laughs> but uh, we it's could crumbled. probably look at that on another building, but I understand what you're saying. But let's go ahead and try to get through this one first. Looking into the future, this right. is what I'm thinking about. Right. I understand what you're thinking about and everybody else do on that smarter. It makes sense that we need to do something down there too because of growth. Just that, that I, I do support, uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I do support this and I support the 14,000 feet, which sounds like we may have 4,000 feet available for a future tenant. And I also am in support of this because the PBA may choose in design process that we need to go 16,000 feet or go back down to 10,000. I'm wide open to what the experts dictate. So I definitely want to pass this so that designers can get to work. Yes, sir. I do have one question regarding page two, numeral one. That's a, do, do all PBA projects have a committee made up like this that is part of the process? This seems like a new component to me. A committee to sit through the process that would include uh, chairman of the PBA or designee, the county mayor or designee, property management chairman or designee, some uh, the building codes director, project manager, construction manager. I assume that's from the final contractor and then the owner's rep, which it declares as Ben. The only thing I can speak of on that is that uh, when we did the judicial building, you remember that judicial building? We had this concept set up right here. And uh, what it is is when the PBA meets, we all are in this meeting. And we all are yeah. represented in this meeting. Yeah. And I went to the meeting on the judicial building, and I hadn't been to any under this because we, we had really hadn't got to that point. But uh, 
in the past we did have this set up. I think it's a great idea. That's a good concept. I just had not seen this with the judicial, or I didn't, just didn't recall it. I most definitely attended on that judicial building, and uh, the, meeting, the meetings were <laughs> long, and it included people from across the county, everybody input, so on and so forth, and we've made changes and we've done a lot. But this is a this is a setup that we had. Yeah. So one A clearly identifies who those folks are. Um, and you as the chairman of the property management committee, or anybody you appoint. If you can't go, you can appoint anybody on this committee. Uh, county building codes director, project manager, construction manager, which would be Ben working in conjunction with with the uh, construction manager. And and I think uh, Mr. Mr. Klein even said the other day, working on the other projects, that they have somebody who would, you know, if they were fortunate enough to get this, but they're working on those those uh, public safety buildings, that they have somebody that work in conjunction. You're kind of like uh, Steve, well, it was not Steve, um, but worked for Gresham Smith. Jerry. 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 Yeah. yeah, you're, you're kind of the new Jerry. Uh, Mr. McAdoo, refresh my memory, but I'm thinking this is probably the same process that we went through when we built the new building down here for the juvenile court, uh, Judge Davenport. I think this that's the same process, isn't it's, it? It's been the standard concept set up for the, since we've had. Like uh, the mayor said, that uh, if you couldn't attend, you would send somebody to represent you know, so it's not new. We do it on all of them. That's your question. Any other discussion? On it? Had a motion and a second that we approve this with the necessary corrections to 3B, correct? Yes, sir. Mr. David Gammon? Yes. Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Buchanan? <laughs> yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. Dodd? Yes. Chairman McAdoo? Yes. Okay. I think that completes yours unless you want to talk on, since you're up here, you want to talk on the community care? But I, I spoke with the architect and the contractor today. I could give you a, just a brief update on. Okay. Um, I, I, today I spoke with the Mike Picklesummer, the architect, and Garver Construction, and they are ready. Garver is ready to mobilize, um, but I think we're going to wait. They said they could be there as early as the 4th of January, but we're, I think we're going to wait until the 11th because of COVID. They said there was, um, there's eight patients, non-COVID patients in the F wing at, out at community care. And so we've got to, those folks are going to have to be relocated. Um, but the, I th every, they're ready to start demo as, as quick as the 11th. And he's got a couple of subcontractors that he's still trying to line up, but that won't affect the, de the uh, demo part of this project. And any questions on the community care? Uh, any no. Hey, I think that concludes your report. Okay. Thank you. Next, uh, jumped on number nine order. Next, uh, T. Dot Thompson Lane Road widening project. I think our engineer is here to present us with some information on this project. Thank you, Chairman McAdoo, Commissioners, Mike Hughes, Rutherford County Engineering. Um, T. 
TDOT is widening Thompson Lane uh, inside the city limits, but they need to acquire a small portion of some county property at the corner of Thompson Lane and Siegel. Um, if you look on your iPad, there are five things uh, listed that have to deal with this project, but the one that would speak volumes is the TDOT right-of-way plan. It shows a little color scheme of what they're wanting to do. They're wanting to acquire uh, 583 square feet on the corner of Siegel and Thompson Lane um, needed for their widening project. They're going from three lanes to five lanes with sidewalks and bike lanes. And then also they're going to need um, a 790 square foot slope easement that will stay county land, but they will need to modify the grade onto county property, and then they will need uh, 3,216 square feet of a uh, temporary construction easement. And that temporary construction easement will stay in place uh, during the life of the project, and they're, which they estimate to be four years. Uh, so all said and told, uh, they are going to pay the county $4,851.15 for all three of those items. So A fair market? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Fair-ish, yes, hmm. yes. But um, like I said, it, it's such a small loss in the corner, um, it's, they're losing one hundredth of us of an acre. It's it won't impact the the property. It will still be one point seven one or seven two acres. So it's still a good uh, good size piece of property. But um, we'll need y'all's approval, I guess, to send this to the full county commission to give the mayor authority to sign the document. Any any questions for? Oh, I'm sorry. I let them wear anything. The only question I have is, I'm sure the state has eminent domain authority, so they declare it and take it over anyway. They'll, they'll, they'll take you know, it one so way or the other. It's, yes. it's really a moot point at yes. this point, right? They're asking nice right now. <laughs> yes, sir. We are getting fair market value. <laughs> Mr. Dodd? Yeah, it, it's eight bucks and something a square foot, I think. So, I mean, I think that's reasonable and it, yeah it's it, uh it, it's not a detriment to our property and i think the slope easement is it, it free still We're stays, giving them the it still easement. stays into the county's property so but i don't think it's detrimental to it would you deem it detrimental no not at all not at all it's just the the road is widening and they'll need to adjust the grades to tie that back in and that's what the slope easement does motion to approve the uh, offer and sign the accompanying document or give the mayor permission to sign the document. I have second to the second commissioner Gannon. Uh only thing uh four thousand eight hundred fifty one dollars and fifteen cents. It's a monetary value, so it will have to go to budget. budget yes sir. Go to budget first. Okay. Yeah. What's what is on the property? It's, it's vacant land right vacant. now. Um, I think doing my research, it was uh, planned to be an EMS station, uh, but they built it on the Siegel School property, which you will also see in the future, the Siegel Middle and High School, but that'll go through the county schools first before y'all see it. So they, they are acquiring some of their land as well. But uh, that there was a plat recorded several years back um single road ems uh, i guess was to put to put a uh, ambulance station there at one time in other discussion if not call the roll Mr. Gooch? Yes. Mr. Buchanan? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Cook? Yes. 
Commissioner Dodd? Yes. Commissioner David Gammon? Yes. Chairman McAdoo? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, property inventory discussion picture book. Discuss that, Mayor. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think we've, we've, um, Mayor's office, we've done what we were asked to do. Uh, I remember a few meetings ago coming back and, and stressing there's a, we need to identify what properties we have. Um, you know, our vision should be to get as much property that we have and we're not using it. Why not sell it and put it back on the tax roll? Um, because it's costing us money for Ben to go out and send his crew out just to mow it, you know, uh, all throughout the summer. So if it's, if it's sellable, why not identify those? And I think um, Mr. Sandler was able to put together a whole list uh, of all the properties that we were able to, to get from, uh, <clears throat> from uh, inside the county, and, and we have those. Now, this is the first I've seen as far as a picture book. Mr. Sandlin, I'm not familiar with the picture book. They want picture. Who who wants a picture? Yeah. I didn't understand okay. the picture book. I saw the. We did a picture book this the last meeting, and then an actual Excel spreadsheet showing you all the properties. Okay, so so uh, that's correct. You got um, GIS to give us a a shot of that. Not I, I do yes, remember sir. that now. Sorry. And then they they marked you know as far as on the school sites how much property was available on those school sites because not the whole we're six foot away <laughs> not the whole property where the school's at is available to do anything with so there might be five acres out of this or 20 acres out of this or whatever and then it shows then county properties that are not schools mm -hmm. that uh, are vacant or have buildings on them so that's broken down for you as well and in that spreadsheet but that's a always growing with county properties and us receiving properties out of uh, not paying the taxes and they revert back to the county or whatever so yeah and 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 of course the properties that we own also from those that that we um have to buy from fema and uh we have Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, those were highlighted also of actually being out of the equation because we really can't do anything with those since we bought those with FEMA dollars. However, um, I was approached by Stan Vault at the last week at PBA, and he said he has a gentleman that he knows that would like to buy one of those pieces of property. I'm not sure that FEMA would allow us. Mike, does FEMA allow us to sell property? That That's what I was thinking. You know, I, I didn't think that once they told us we had to buy it, we just have to keep it up. We, we had talked about that, I think, within our department, but maybe not on the commissioners, that uh, we might need to check with the state and see if there's another uh, way we can go about it. Because we ha we do have some, some properties that... Um, either the neighbor across the street or right beside you or behind you would look like to have that property because the house is not on it anymore. You know, to put volleyball courts, we've heard of everything, you know, a, a community walking area or something, depending on how big it is. But really right now our hands are tied. We can't really do anything because it's it's been bought with FEMA dollars. And we, we, were, we exhausted that, it seems like, pretty diligently during the meetings when we approved to purchase that property. And I think we can, only thing we can do is mow them it's in perpetuity. It's, and Mike, Mike can, I don't know if we need to speak to that or not, or it may just be for another meeting, but we, we own those. You, you may lease the property, uh, but it still has to be owned by the county. Uh, you can't build anything on it except a park, uh, like uh, Deputy said, uh, walking trail, some kind of community activity, but no, no permanent structure. So we can lease it? You can lease it, yes, sir. Okay. Well, there was a, a, a gentleman who called and talked to Mr. Sandlin. He and his neighbor, it, the lot is that we've torn the house down is in between 
and they both have kids and they want to bring kids over they want to they want to put some kind of ball field or something on it you know while their kids are still young you know i'm sure that'll disappear when they go off to college or whatever in a few years but at least we could lease it for a few years a lease agreement with you know with the county attorneys a blessing would probably suffice so yeah i think we'd probably need some hold harmless if they're going to lease it that some kid gets hurt on it they're not going to turn around and sue us we need to look into that because I think that would be a great idea. You know, community garden has even been brought up on some folks. And sure. so if we can lease yeah, it for a dollar, that would save us. And I'm telling how many dollars just in mowing cost every year to, to keep those properties mowed and looking good. Get out so. there and mow it and plant tomatoes and corn, whatever they want to plant. You know, that'd be good. Look at that and pass it through a county attorney. That's sure. County. Yeah. Well, it grow up on that. Yeah, we I'll uh, we'll check on that. They're not liable. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll check on that. Is there any interest in any other pieces of property that anybody was able to see on the list that they would like to go in and move forward and, and at least listing it for sale? We That's have you. a sinkhole where uh, Laverne Middle School is. That's why they didn't get the, the high school in there because of the sinkhole. It goes to the river. So we're going to have to watch what we lease. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to. I, I was approached yesterday. Was it yesterday? Things are just crazy. Uh, we, we met with the mayors on the COVID issue over at. Um, was it? Was that Friday? Okay, that was Friday. Okay, so anyway, in talking with Brian Hercules, city manager for the city of Smyrna, uh, we own a parcel of property that actually is adjoins their track where they have a fire hall down behind Crosland Supply. And um, he said if the way the property was cut, and I don't know how we ended up buying it along with them, but they want to expand their fire hall and add on to it to build more um, living quarters for their fire hall. But our piece of property basically cuts their concrete apron in half, their driveway where they bring their trucks in. He said they would be interested in selling that. And I said, selling not given right he goes yes they'd, they'd be interested in selling that so those type of pieces of property that you know if they're willing to pay fair market value or you know we negotiate a deal we're just wanting to put some things back on tax roll well i think we can proceed on if we look at the picture book so so we say in the math office or well how, how do you want to handle it mr chairman do you want to yeah, and then we get you want to bid it to whoever real estate firm? Uh, I think first it probably need to come through the mayor's office and, and uh, present it to this committee. That's just me. Let, let us identify what? Let us identify okay. it first. And the reason I say that because if it comes to this committee through the mayor's office, it may be another department out in the county somewhere that had been looking at doing something with that piece of property and hadn't approached us. And then if we go obligate ourselves to sell it, and then this department or whatever come up and say, hey, we were looking at that piece of property, we really want it. I hate to get that far on this end without knowing. That's, we don't mind. We got plenty of time. Commissioner Johnson. Would it be in order maybe that if the deputy mayor and the mayor could get together and come up with a priority list of the most desirable uh, pieces of property that we could dispose of, and then maybe a, a use of a list of what the requirements might be for the schools to the possibility that they might use some of that. Would that I, be in I, order? I'm, I'm thinking let's take some baby steps. <laughs> let's identify two, three, four, five pieces of property on that whole list. <clears throat> And, and find out what, um, you know, the size, is it sellable? Let's bring it back to you and say, you know, here's, here's our top priority that we think might be able to put it back on the market and sell it um, in today's time. We go from there. 
I like that idea as long as we get it out to our public, yes, to our departments. We know. can do that. Yeah. Any other discussion on this? The, the, uh, Commissioner Dodd. Thanks, Chairman. The, with this COVID, and I've been at Zoom and present, so was it thoroughly, did everybody get a good grasp of what was presented? Do we on this committee understand the spreadsheet or the pictures or is it, does it, uh, is it sufficient for this group to make any decisions on it? I got to get your new committee member uh, Commissioner Buchanan, a um, picture book and and uh, PowerPoint. So I'll I'll get you that. I'm thinking this is probably going to be February because I'm going to give you some information here in a minute about what we're getting ready to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I may answer my own question that, that if if uh, department heads and the mayor and the deputy to the mayor, if they do present a priority list we'll have that document to go back and reflect on that might be so you th your your suggestion may be the best yes sir okay mr johnson i think there's a lot to absorb in that picture book and myself i'm not qualified to <laughs> make all these decisions so that's the reason i'm saying that we need a priority list and, uh, well, maybe a yeah. future usage of some of the school property, et cetera, something kind of condense it for us to make a recommendation on. Commissioner Gooch, you're shaking your head. Do you need any kind of a motion or anything to put this in effect? I mean, you can just give us a, that okay. direction. You just give us that direction, and we'll come back, we'll report back to you, uh, and, and I'll tell you in a minute about February. Okay. I think basically they, they've been doing a good job of putting back to us anyway about properties. So yeah. we'll get you the information too, you. Mr. Chairman yeah. and committee members on the lease, leasing that um, uh, FEMA properties that we bought out. And we'll get the details on that and we can uh, come back with that at the same time. That reminds me of something that we decided on this committee. And I think Commissioner Gooch stuck me on that subcommittee. That's on this uh, tax property. In other words, we had to have a committee. Delinquent tax property. Yeah, we had to have a committee to look at delinquent tax property. That's correct. So, where are we on that? Are we just going to meet? Yeah, and with everything happening right now, we, we may want to look and towards the end of uh, first quarter of 21. So that would take care of the link with tax property right there. Yes, <laughs> we're not going to get anything done between now and the end no, of the year. No, uh, I, I, I do want to add something to that committee. I, I do think Commissioner Gooch should be an adjunct or uh, <laughs> in the wings it, just in case we need any extra help. I, I would like for the chairman to ask that he always be available if we need <laughs> yeah. to call on it. <laughs> I'm already already available. Yeah. I need to be called on. <laughs> I got his private number. I can get a hold of him. <laughs> Commissioner Buchanan, he uh, he volunteered me for the for the role on this committee, so that's why I want to make sure he's available. <laughs> Commissioner Buchanan, they were looking for leadership to make those nominations, and it just come off the top of my head. Oh, <laughs> oh man. But I, I, I looked at all the information that was passed out. I didn't know we were going to give this, the information that we got, the name of a picture book. But that's a good name for me. Right. But I think we should commend Steve and the mayor's office. Well, for probably, that probably Rachel suggested it. I don't know. It's between the two of them. Yeah. Picture book. Yeah, but it is a lot of information in that. Yes, sir. And. Uh, so if you got any questions on a piece of property that the county owns, you specifically can see where it's located and you can go out there physically and look at it if you want to. So I think that was, that was a good job, really good job. Put your commissioner hat on, you can walk out there. <laughs> I think you own it. Hey. I know, they had me walking out there one time with some property. 
but anyway. Any other discussion on property, inventory discussion, picture book? <coughs> Uh, any other business coming before the committee? Commissioner um, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, two things. Uh, one thing I've been working with, with Ben uh, is that we currently own the building next to Journey's home over uh, on, on um, what's the street? Haley. Yeah. On Haley. Uh, to where our our Pauls used to be, uh, but that's where we have that our convenience center located right there. And then Journeys is two doors down. There's a brick building, okay, and right next to the brick building that's now vacant is um, uh, Tennessee Tennessee rehabilitation. Re rehabilitation facility. They're down to two people out of that great big building and it has a loading dock on the back. Ben and his office is over here, you know, where the old school board used to be, right next to the uh, new archives building. Um, they're probably gonna be moving out of that building uh, where uh, Tennessee Vocational is located. It would be perfect. We already have some stuff stored in there um, and they're willing to uh, our lease doesn't run out, Ben, until when? Next year? Sometime in the spring. Yeah, sometime this spring. So sometime this spring or if they decide to, to bail earlier and go down where probation, their state probation office is down by um, Gold's Gym, they may be moving their offices there, but this would allow Ben he says he dreams about it because it would give him so much more room. They could actually have a section for uh, carpentry, one for metal works, one for whatever, and then offices up front. And we own the building. So just want to put that on your radar that would, uh, and a loading dock in the back would be huge. And um, I think there's a tow motor over there. We might be able to convince the state just to leave it. Might be able to use that. So just to let you know what we're doing. Is Journey Home is moving out of that building, aren't they? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Matter of fact, uh, it's I, on the list and the governor's uh, uh, grant list. We're going to put a new roof on there for them uh, because it's, they've got some leaks. So that's, we're waiting until the weather breaks in the spring. We'll be putting a new roof on there, but then we'll take over this building over here on Haley which is right next door. Well, I, th I thought Journey Home was building a new building. No, that's, that's, uh, Greenhouse. that's Greenhouse, Greenhouse Ministries. Mr. Chairman. Yes. It, 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 uh, I'm confused too, because um, Journey Home is on Front Street. It's a nonprofit. Journeys, on the other hand, is the Haley Road. Is it called Journeys? or? Journeys for Community Living. Journeys for Community Living is on is, Haley Road. Is that's on correct. Haley. That's correct. And that's we, we have a building. That's our building. We own both of those. leasing it. Yes, sir. We own both those buildings. But I thought that Ben had already moved into part of that building. Maybe that's what Carol and I are thinking. Did, was there already some expansion or some vacant space Ben was beginning to use out there? Ben. We were storing. We've been storing. Come up. Be on the record. In, in our building ben. that's leased to the state. Come get on the record. Ben. Are you grabbed the mic? I'm sorry, we, they have a warehouse in the back and we've been storing items back there. For, we actually have been for several years, but they've cut back their staff. The, they don't have any clients using the facility at all now. It's just a couple of, of office people and so I think they're planning on vacating that building in the very near future. They've totally changed the, the way they operate back. I was on that board back when I was on the county commission with, with your dad and Robert Rose was chairman of both and, and both uh, journeys and it was a Rutherford County Adult Activity Center then and they would have a joint luncheon together. Um, gosh, uh, Larry Trail, I was trying to think of who all 
um, Ted Beatty's currently on the board uh, for journeys and community living. Uh, but uh, the Tennessee Vocational, they're doing things remotely now, so they don't need that office space. So it's a nice opportunity for our maintenance department. Get them out of that building. They're just so crammed in there. So we may expand the, the move you're already making to occupy some of that building. Right, we'll have to we move. may just acquire some more of that space if the state actually steps out. They stepped out. The we'll building that we're roofing s soon. Not that building. We're going to re-roof Journeys next door. Okay. Now I'm starting to get there with you. <laughs> <laughs> I may need to just go out there and look at the buildings and get my head back around it. But we're not looking at buying a building or do it. We're no, no, re-roofing we're one. Another one may become vacant that we already own. We own both. Yes. Both. Okay. That's correct. Thank you for clarifying for okay uh no other questions on that the last thing i'll say mr chairman I'll, I'll just go ahead and want to inform you that i'll be issuing an order tomorrow uh, that will go out to all department heads and of course you'll get this by email tomorrow effective wednesday of this week uh in keeping with executive order 70 by governor b bill lee yesterday i was on the webex yesterday afternoon with with Dr. Piercy, Commissioner of Health, and she came here today and gave the first injection in Rutherford County over our health department. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna go back to where we were last March and April um, because of this Thanksgiving surge and hopefully and preparing for the Christmas surge and New Year's surge. So uh, the my order will say, uh, effective Wednesday of this week, day after tomorrow, all non-essential people will stay at home. I think uh, in talking to um, Director Cody York at IT, he said that all the laptops that they gave everybody last March and April, he told them just to hang on to them because we didn't know at that point in time, will we be going down this road again? So if you can work at home, we want you to stay at home. That will run from uh, the 23rd and through January the 11th, which will give us enough time to see what the effects are after New Year's. That'll give us at least 11 days after that to see what the effects of both of those two holidays are gonna be on us. Uh, Tennessee is ranked number one in the country. I don't know why. We just love hugging or something, I don't know, but why we are at the top of the entire country as far as um, rising in, prop, in, in uh, positive cases. Uh, and of course, Rutherford County, at least Hamilton and Knox has surpassed us before we were number three in the state. It was Shelby, Davidson, and then us, but now Hamilton and Knox has surpassed us. Uh, so we're number five or number six in the state, but that still doesn't mean we're not, we're losing. Today, I think it came out, we, they were unable to report yesterday, but we've lost a total of six in the last two days. But we're averaging about two people a day um, and probably three to 400 testing positive. It just affects different folks. It is a concern with what's happening in, in the UK. Uh, a new variation is out of this virus what they're saying and it's mutating so i don't know what that will do to us but we need to be safe so from this point forward after wednesday we're probably going to be zooming all of our meetings uh, so try to get prepared for that um, so unless it's just an essential employee we'll close down all the county offices uh, so i'll send that out tomorrow effective wednesday any questions is this, are they giving two shots on this? Uh, yes, ma'am. You'll get a little tag that tells you. Okay, but what I'm thinking, how many days from the first shot to the second shot? Uh, it's 21 days. 21? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I know they were talking about 28 at one time. I think it's 21 for Moderna oh. also. Uh, one other thing, Ms. Ms. Chairman, I'm working on is... Uh, I sent it over today is possibly leasing and this will have to come back. I'm going to use my emergency powers if, if I'm able to, to negotiate this. 
um, is to uh, in working with with JCM. JCM is a property management company that bought the State Farm building out on the Jarnet and Memorial. They bought it in 2013, and State Farm, like it, it's a tax advantage. AT and T and all the big companies do that. They build it, and then they, before they move into it, they lease it. So what we're negotiating with them right now is the drive through uh, what they call their claims or collision center. It's a three bay building. It's separate from the big building, but it's on the same campus. And they have, and of course that building's empty now because everybody's gone home and they're working from home and they're gonna be selling this building. But what we're, our interest right now is that three bay building. I'll have to bring it back to the uh, purchasing uh, purchasing committee for approval retroactive back to if I can sign the contract this week because of the State Department of Health told Chris Clark um, that they want a drive through. They want to be able to drive through the once we get into the after the new year and we start inoculating um, our general citizenship. We're doing the first responders first doctors, nurses, et cetera, and then we'll start getting into the general population. That campus is large enough we can stack tons of cars, and, and uh, the cool thing about this building is that um, on the out, when you drive through, there's enough stacking area outside we'll, because we need to retain those people in the car for at least 10 to 15 minutes after they get the inoculation because some people faint, get lightheaded. We don't want them back out on the road. And so the state's going to require us to hold them until we make sure that they're okay to drive. So I'm, I'm uh, crossing my fingers and hoping that we can, we can get this. If I can get it for free, we won't have to go to uh, uh, property management. I mean, excuse me, to uh, purchasing. If I can get it, <clears throat> get it for free. If but if they charge me a dollar or anything, I, you know, I have to bring it back to purchasing just for making sure we did everything uh, transparently. <clears throat> but I, I kept reminding them through my conversations over the last week and a half, as they were a good neighbor too. So. Uh, like a good neighbor, you know. I'm sorry. Twenty-eight days. Twenty-eight days. On this one given today. On, and that was Moderna. Yes, twenty-one on the ones given in the hospital. Okay, Pfizer. Pfizer is twenty-one days. Moderna is what was given today. It, they hit it hit the ground here in Rutherford County, and that's twenty-eight days. So, both you and I were correct. Uh, do you understand what the mayor was talking about on the building, each one? I'm sorry? So uh, you want to negotiate that tomorrow? Uh, I'm, I uh, had it in Nick's hands today. He's redlined a couple of things. Uh, they want to know if we needed warehouse space, and I said, no, we don't need warehouse space. That uh, all we need is that building. We'll bring in folding chairs and tables. If we need, instead of having to go into the big building, we have three uh, trailers that we, you know, semi-trailers that we can use uh, in order to store products or whatever it may be. We're going to need to figure out how to secure that serum, though. Um, Okay, uh, that's just a report to let you know. Uh, Information only. Yeah, it, yeah. FYI, you'll all get a uh, an email out of the office tomorrow, just bringing you up to date what we're getting ready to do. That's why I had you. I thought I'd tell you. Uh, any other business we need to discuss this evening? Not entertain a motion to adjourn. Meeting adjourned.